Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Speaking Of. I'm here with the esteemed Marco Silanpa, we're going to talk about interoperability and federation. Um, whether, when, how to, is it a good idea, not a good idea? Uh, and so, welcome, Marco. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Sure. That's the old joke. I made this with Kevin Parker the other week, too. It's nice being had. <laughs> you couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> uh, just so the world knows, we've known each other a long time. It may get a little goofy, and that's perfectly fine. Um, Marco is one of the people that I find I have some of the most interesting conversations with. Uh, we're usually at a conference or something, uh, and I don't have a recorder, and so all these nuggets of wisdom and experience um, sort of they get stuck in my brain. And that's a shame because, Marco, you, you know lots about lots of things. You've been plying these sort of content information trades for a long time. Um, if you wouldn't mind, give us five seconds of, of background and sure. 30 seconds on this topic, which we started talking about at InfoGovCon. And I thought we got to write this down. Sure. So um, I've been in the um, enterprise content management, content services platform slash DMS space for 20 years. Uh, when I started, I, I worked for, originally for Documentum, and usually back then the problem was the big document. And so um, you know, we we kind of started going down the path of a single repository for an, an organization, and and that's I think where this real federation game comes across. You know, when you look back in you know, at the, uh, in, in, in 2000, you know, you had companies like FileNet and OpenText and, and, uh, IBM with their content manager and Documentum and then usually a bunch of, you know, other much smaller vendors. Um, but as time moved on, much more, you know, additional players came into the space and organizations, especially those in the global 1000, um, have really found themselves with multiple platforms. Um, you know, if you look at Forrester, Gartner, uh, or AIM, they're talking about anywhere from, you know, five to ten repositories. And so it's really causing some silo issues, and, and it's really kind of become acceptable to recognize that challenge of a single repository last year uh, when, when uh, Gartner announced kind of the end of the concept of enterprise content management. <laughs> I'll get restarted on that one. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Um, I mean, I'm always, I've always been something of a heretic. So even 10, 15 years ago, I, I started speculating on the notion that, you know, it's okay to manage things in place. If, as, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go in there and say manage everything in place because the world isn't absolute like that. Right, right. But at that period, I remember, you know, all the big players were talking about, well, just we'll suck it all in and then we can manage it in, in one place. It'll be so much more efficient, blah, blah, blah. Cost effective? How'd that work out, people? You know, yeah, a lot of yeah. times it worked. A lot of times it didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to call it the Highlander principle, based on the Highlander movie. You know, there shall be only one. <laughs> and uh, I, I, you know, it, 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 it was it was great marketing, and, and I think it was a it was a noble goal to try to try to get towards. But I think probably the challenges were, you know, I, I think it's easy to look at, you know. To kind of look backwards and suddenly say, well, wait a minute, everything works so easily these days. But, you know, when you go back to, to that time era, you know, graphical workflow mapping, for instance, which is, you know, kind of a norm these days, um, that was really something that only Documentum had. Um, everyone else was still using Excel tabs to, to you know, Excel-based spreadsheets to, to create workflows. And so, you know, there was a lot of reasons if your complexity was more around the workflow, you would go in and, and probably use Documentum. If you had a lot of images, you'd probably use FileNet. You know, if you were looking at compound documents, you know, it was IBM or, you know, it was FileNet or, or, or Documentum. And so people had to find different solutions to solve these different problems. And, you know, the, the in place always, you know, it definitely made sense, but, you know, usually the, the vendors were the ones that were kind of trying to push you know, folks to folks to bring them all into one. Um, you know, the the one misnomer, you know, that I kind of look at you know, talking back ten years, you know, federations isn't something that's new. Um, you know, if you go back to um, 90, 98, 99, 2000, you know, that that sort of window, you run into a company called Venetica 
um, that was the first one that attempted to try to do this. I knew so, I knew them. I did a monthly client study on enterprise interoperability, which I did call that so I could write EIO and we could sing it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but I remember them clearly, and I thought that's a, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Today, you know, I still talk in terms of middleware, which right. I know is an older term. Um, I honestly don't even know what the newer term is. Um, is I mean, web services, I guess, APIs. I mean, those aren't new, but I mean that that's the premise behind the content services platform. I mean, that that is to sit down. You know, I, I've been trying to, you know, figure out how to have the, how to have the conversation. I think, you know, there is a concept to how you manage content across your enterprise. Now, whether you call that enterprise concept management as a, you know, verb rather than as a, as a subject, um, now I think, I think is a challenge. The, you know, the goal really, you know, as you talk about the middleware is that these ECM, traditional ECM solutions should now be solved by a platform because what's happening is is we've got silos that have really emerged. You've got the whole ECM space over here doing their own thing and you know suddenly you have this this entire ecosystem of vendors that have you know really popped up only in the last four years uh, doing things like accounts payable with companies like Esker or uh, contracts management with uh, with Conga or uh, Exari. Um, you know, so these whole spaces are being built up around how do you manage a document, and they're doing the basics. Um, you know, they're doing version control, they're doing things like you know some simple workflows, and so you know that whole that whole space has kind of popped up, and the the, the goal of, and the messaging behind the content services platform is really to sit down and say, you know, those you shouldn't be building a content management system from scratch. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of two guys in a truck. I mean, um, I, I I know I know cases right now where you know two guys in a computer built a, a, a state wide solution for managing documents. You know, if you have a database and a file system, you can sit down and go, "Hey, I can put these two together and suddenly create a document management system." But you know, there's a lot more to it, and that's what these folks have done. And you know, they're missing the fact that things like workflow, things like records management, things like e-discovery exist, and those are completely outside that spectrum. And so, you know, if you as you look at sort of the content challenge that exists today, you know, you have those documents that an organization has tried to put inside of a of a traditional ECM or DMS solution, or you know, maybe we'll even call some of them managing because they're still really that that. You know, that digital paper, but then they have the file system, and now they have these you know, other sources, which we used to think of as your, you know, your cloud sharing platform. But truly, you know, other line of business apps like SAP or Salesforce, or even these completely freestanding applications that do nothing but content. And so, you know, as an organization, that problem just continues to get wider and wider. And you know, if, if you look at you know, those vendors that are doing things like contracts management or accounts payable, uh, they won't talk to each other. And, you know, if you look at it from a, the traditional enterprise content management view, that's one of the things that we talk about a lot is, you know, how do I manage my documents together? Because that salesperson does need to see some of those AP invoices without having to log in. But no, so that's that challenge around the middleware and, and what, you know, kind of federations are looking to resolve. It's how do I, you know, either with one platform that's federation enabled, you know, do this and, and move content over or, you know, connect it while where it sits or, you know, how do I look at migrations? And so it's really the, the challenge and, and kind of the market that's trying to emerge and kind of saying, hey, we're here is this concept of both federations and migrations as, as a way to move forward. Right. Um, these, by necessity, are, are fairly short videos. So um, in just a few minutes, I wonder if, if you could share a little bit about what you see as best practice. I mean, for me, in a lot of cases, right. when I'm working with clients, um, depending, I mean, it, it's very individualized, of course, depending what the infrastructure is that they have. But I often turn to metadata as a way to hook these things together and really use a, a, a search and find function as a way to, to provide that connective tissue. 
Do you right. have thoughts on that or, or other, maybe a couple of different scenarios real quick on, on how people should think about it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, you know, one of the things that we kind of skipped over as we looked at this is, you know, there are federation, federated search platforms. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of hesitate with the word federation because, you know, yes, you can go through and find all of your documents, but can you do anything with those documents? <laughs> now you found that document. Now I need to go in and open up, you know, that source system and go make those changes. So, you know, there is that federated view, you know, so, so really what this, you know, federation without the word search behind it means is, is, you know, let's pull these, let's talk to them in, in a bi-directional approach. So I can not only find those documents, but I can also act on those documents where they lie. And so, you know, the, it, it, to some, it seems it's a, a change in, in kind of the way federated search works. Um, the federated search vendors don't necessarily see the demand for it, which is, which is kind of awkward. Um, you know, it's the, I, I think what you're running into is a lot of visionary folks that are saying, I can't shut off this other system, but I need this new system to be able to manage my documents. And so, you know, that, that visionary approach is what's bringing federations into play. So the idea that I can, you know, if I have a system, because not all systems will be able to support this because you need to be able to understand documents as freestanding objects that are not necessarily in your store, you can go through and, you know, from within one platform access documents from another as, as if they're in your solution. And that means, you know, using workflows. I mean, the way to think about this is, you know, um, you know, and, and I'll, you know, we had an attempt at this in, in the ECM space with, with CMIS. Um, right. But if you're very familiar with ODBC or JBBC, I mean, that's really what we're saying is, is, you know, it really doesn't matter which platform, you know, this is, you know, the new round of federations is kind of, you know, I, I sometimes say CMIS or CMIS on, you know, 2.0, but then, you know, people kind of get lost. And so you know, I, I think that's the, you know, I, I think that's the, the, the goal and kind of the, 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 the platform agnostic view that these vendors are taking. But at the same time, you know, these visions of federations don't always come to be or it's a mixed model. And so organizations are saying, well, I'm going to, consolidate, you know, seven down to three. So I'm going to migrate some of these repositories over. I'm going to federate some of these others. And so you end up with, you know, either a couple different tools or some custom grown stuff or, you know, platforms that you can do both with and, and, and be able to completely you know, flip a switch on because, you know, as, as we know, projects aren't all about technology. There's sometimes, you know, politics are involved. You may think you're about to shut down this, this legacy system or this uh, incumbent system, but then, you know, the owners of the incumbent system call you up and say, no, we're not turning it off. And so <laughs> their, your migration path is, yeah. is over and now you need to build a federation approach. And, you know, so how do you, you know, how do you solve that? I think is, is, is where this, you know, I would call it the third iteration of, of federations is coming into play is that, you know, it's recognizing that it is about both migrations and federations. So just to, to, to put a fine point on it, if, if what I hear you saying is it's okay if it's not in one place. And in fact, my take on that would be it's not only okay, but a lot of times that is the preferred way as long as you can get that bi-directional communication going between the systems to do what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah, ultimately, you know, you, you need some sort of a centralized index, centralized communication, and, and that's that's really what these federation players are doing. If you look at, you know, what, uh, you know, Systemware, M-Files, or Nuxio are talking about, it's all about, you know, maintaining a sing, you know, the single index of the metadata and how, how they act upon that across those platforms, you know, kind of kind of changes. You know, you, you've got, you know, the idea that they have the, 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 the in-place versus, you know, registered, and so, you know, there, there's a bunch of different ways that folks are, are doing this. I think it's just the challenge of understanding, you know, where, where that, you know, what, what ultimately the end user needs and, and what platform is going to help them get there. Okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. If you're still using a traditional Documentum FileNet insert monolithic ECM system here, you know, because you got it 10 years ago. Right. What advice do you have for someone who may already realize this is going to break soon <laughs> or it's already started to break. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that's the, you know, there's definitely the break. I, I think, you know, that sometimes, you know, a lot of folks are just talking about, oh, let's get rid of all legacy systems. And, you know, honestly, you know, 
there's not necessarily, sometimes you don't need to get rid of a legacy system. I mean, it's, there, there's really, there's, you know, so, so you should really check that first and see, you know, okay, what, what am I going to get if I, if I disconnect it? But, but if you have an unhealthy system that you're trying to, trying to work, you know, work around, I think, you know, a couple of the things you got to look at is, is whether or not what you're doing is making it unhealthy. I mean, if you're trying to do a lot of stuff that, that, that you can't do, you know, do with that system, um, and, and you've added a bunch of code, maybe you can ease that by using a federation or, or you know, or, or kind of going that approach. But, you know, ultimately, if it's, if it's something that's unstable because of its age, I think, I think you have to look at the migration approach. You know, federations, um, won't solve the problem of bad performance. I mean, if the, if the server still goes down, if you're, if you, people are requesting 10,000 documents out of that system and you're coming at it from a federation, you know, the federation isn't going to, um, typically the federation isn't going to do anything like you know, that, that's going to help you with those performances. You're still going to have those transactions I mean, because those, those documents sit in that are still sitting in that source system. So in those cases is when you really need to look at the migration to say, okay, let's, let's move that off. And, and again, this is usually, you know, you know the, the case scenario I've seen several times, they go to, you know, rip out a legacy system because they think that, you know, okay, it's, it's dying. It's on its last leg. We haven't paid maintenance for three years. And they start doing the deep checking because, you know, everybody's either retired or, or moved on. And the next thing you know, you have, you know, five systems that need to connect to that legacy data. And you have no way of making changes because um, those legacy connections are 10 to 15 years old as well. And so, okay, now I do need to have a, sort of a federated mixed approach where, you know, I'm going to have, a migration of all the existing content and then build a federation for any of the new content until I can figure out how to, you know, disconnect these because I'm actually reminded of a joke that someone, I, I was at a conference in Sweden once and the presentation was all in Swedish, but this guy drew an octopus that showed how the system was connected into all these different back office processes. And then when you start pulling on the octopus, it's grabbing all those processes. And I'm like kind of having that vision right now that, you know, <laughs> that's the challenge, you know, it's like, you know, I can just, oh, yeah, I'm going to switch it off, and, and it, it just doesn't happen to do that. That's the, the power of the Federation is, is you can leave that be, don't worry about what's going on, and do a whole bunch of new stuff with that old content. And you know, if you look at it from a records approach, you know, so maybe maybe that old content isn't needed as much anymore. So you, know, you kind of have the old dusty, you know, the physical world, you have the old dusty archive with the spiders crawling around it. You know, maybe that's not a bad thing to have for a few years federated in. You know, and then, you know, simply when you know that the data is no longer needed, just completely shut down, you know, just turn that, turn that system off without ever having to do the migration. I love a conversation that wraps up with octopus and spiders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just for my own satisfaction, we talked about this just before we clicked the record button. Right. Um, you're of Finnish descent. Yes. How do you really pronounce your name? And I don't mean Marco. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's not right either. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it's Marco is my my first name, and then Silab Bat. You gotta you gotta roll the R's. But uh, yeah, I uh, I've actually been fortunate enough. I've had a, I've, I've had some work con work trips to Finland, and uh, I've uh, I've learned very quickly that my Finnish is rather old. So uh, I don't I don't uh, I don't quite uh, as as one person uh, I, I I my my uh, my uh, Parents come from a very rural background, so I have a, uh, I have what would be called a southern twang. Okay, <laughs> well, my Finnish accent. Your 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 Finnish may be old, but your thoughts are modern, and we appreciate that you took the time to share them with us, um, folks. I hope you enjoyed this half as much as I did. Keep those cards and letters coming, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Steve.